So what we learnt, what we learnt was transformations. And I, I really whipped it through this week where we did A, B, C, D, combinations. Transformations reading when you're dilating it, translating it, and reflecting it. The second thing you did was then sketching it. So once you can read the equation, you can sketch it. That means you can also look at an equation and read the transformation. That was part two. So that was G H I and I mean G H and F. So F sketching get uh, sketching G's apply and then H is reading from the graph. Okay? Now I and J is this is your third part. Third part of the transformation is now applying matrices, which is what you learnt how to use inverses to solve. Okay? Now, let's think about this because this whole exercise, again, you can memorize a lot of things and that's what I'm saying. It. I don't want you to memorize because when you memorize, there's so much for you to do. Instead, I want you to think about it logically. You now know how to do matrices. You now understand transformations. Let's try to think about it this way. Remember I showed you matrix multiplication. I said matrix A times matrix X equals matrix B. And you were able to now solve for X because you can find the inverse, yeah? And just reminding you, when the inverse exists, X exists. And if X exists, what does that mean? There's a what? There's a solution. If there's a solution, it means there's two lines. That means they do intersect one point, so a unique point. Okay, so unique solution. Now, before we get into all that, that's later on, that's for exercise 3J, where you're solving for it, but this time now you're solving for something different. Okay, you're still solving exactly the same thing. Well, what I want you to see is, when I do matrix A times matrix X, which is XY, equals to matrix B, right? You do your matrix multiplication, you'll say A times X, so row one times column one, so A times X and then B times Y and you add that. That gives you that number on the top. This gives you the number on the bottom. C times X and then D times Y gives you the number on the bottom. So this is nice because this gives you a number in which that you can relate to in terms of how are we going to use transformations because I've got X. I've got dilation A times X. I've also got dilation B times Y. So the nice thing is, if I want to keep it as all the transformations for X and all the transformations for Y, it is possible to do, writing it as a matrix form. That's why it's called matrix transformations. So if I put zeros in now, because I just want the X and I want the Ys, what you notice is if I did A, 0, 0, D, then A times X will give me AX plus 0 times Y, which is 0. So that's why it becomes AX. And then I have 0 times x, which is 0, plus d times y, and I've got dy. Why do I want this? Is because now, that's a dilation. That's an a times x, and that's a b, d times y. So I can write my transformation such that it is just ax, and then dy. That means that if I did now matrix addition, or a matrix subtraction, so for example, if I said now, minus, oh sorry, add on, one, two, and you were add to add transformations. Again, these are both the same matrix. It's a two by one, two by one. So if you were to add it, you would say this is AX plus one, and this would be DY plus two. Why do you want that? Because now you can read the transformation. That's dilation factor A from your Y axis and one unit to the right. This is now dilation of factor D from the X axis and you're moving up by two. You see, so all I've done is I've used what we've learnt in matrices and I'm just rewriting a transformation in this form. Okay? Because remember, the transformations are always linear. Because it's linear, you can use matrices. That's why. Okay? So, the reason why I'm emphasizing that is because you don't need... Oh, sorry. Let me just take off the music. Otherwise, it becomes distracting. Oh, I can't be bothered. You're just going to listen to it now. <laughs> All right, so technically we can say this. A and D are your dilations and reflections. So if I did 3, 0, 0, negative 2, and I multiply it to matrix X, which is XY, 
This would give me matrix B. So I'm just writing up here so you can see. This is matrix X, matrix A. Row 1, column 1, that's what I'm writing here. 3 times X, and then 0 times Y. You simplify that, that becomes 3X minus 2Y. Nice thing is, this is now a transformation, if I keep that 0 and 0 there. So this is a transformation where you can say dilation of factor 3, factor 3, from y-axis because you're affecting all the x values so you're stretching it horizontally so it's from the y-axis that's a reflection there's a negative there that's a reflection but because you're affecting your y values it's a reflection in your x axis and then finally you got your dilation of factor 2 from the x-axis because you're affecting your y values so it's moving away from the x okay and so this is, this is what I'm trying to put to you, that it's very logical. You can read the transformation from matrices just the way you have been with the coordinates. Okay, so when I say x, y, you were able to read it like this. When I give you that, oh sorry, 3x, negative 2y, you were able to read that. I'm just now asking you to write these linear equations in a matrix form. Okay, and so that means if you really understand that, you don't have to memorize this. This is the page in your textbook that uh, you'll find that you'll try to memorize and it's too much. You see what they try to show you is they say, oh yeah, this is your x dash which is your transformation and say that's 1 times by 1 and now if you want a reflection in the x-axis you affect your y values. What they're really saying here is they're just saying x, y to, you know once you have a reflection in the x-axis um, x it has to be negative y. That's what they're saying here. So transformation for y dash is negative y, and then they say, now try to write those matrix, memorize this matrix. That matrix means reflection x. This matrix means reflection y. This matrix means dilation. This matrix means duh. You don't have to do that. Why do you have to memorize all these matrices and, and sort of think about it? It's like, which one is it again? Because that's what students keep asking me year after year. They're like, which one is it? And I'm like, you don't need to. Because if you can read that, you can place that into these. It makes sense. These are just your times, and that's why it's zero, 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 zero. These are always going to be zeros, because what you're trying to keep are the x and y's. So that will always affect your y's. That will always affect your x. You don't have to memorize this. It makes sense. Okay. And once you don't have to memorize, that means you can play around with it. You can choose to use matrices, or you can choose to use that. And either method's fine. It doesn't matter which one. Okay, unless the question specifically asks that they want you to use matrix form, that's when you have to. Okay, so that's why exercise three I. That's why I'm saying if you've got the basics and you understand the one concept I was teaching from three A to D, you can technically do the whole chapter because it's just the one idea. Reading that, okay, and then you can sketch and you use matrices to solve. Okay, now let's look at uh, and the, this is me trying to explain the translation that you can do the dilation, you put in the zeros, you get your dilation, adding on a matrix or subtracting a matrix is your translation. See if I add on F, then it becomes, this is my X values adding F, this is my Y values adding G. And there you go. Now you've got all your sort of multiplication and subtraction and dilation. So this is just me giving you an example of that. But let's do this one. Okay, let's do an example just so you feel that, oh yeah, I think I've got this, okay? Let's have a look at this. It says a transformation is defined by the matrix. Okay, so you've got 3, 0, 0, 2. The first thing that I think about straight away is when I see this, I'm like, oh, that's going to be 3 multiplied to an x coordinate, 2 multiplied to a y coordinate. So already I know this is a dilation of factor 3 from the y axis, dilation of factor 2 from the x axis. Okay, or alternatively, you can always think of it like this. You can always think of that as 3 times x and 2 times y. Okay, so you don't have to me memorize the matrix. It makes sense that if you did 3, 0, 0, 2 and you multiply to a coordinate x, y, it will give you 3x, 2y. Okay, so 0 times y, 3 times x gives you that, 0 times x, 2 times y. Okay, that's why I know. That is my matrix transformation. And they're just asking you now, find the equation of the image of the graph. Okay, so they're saying this is your equation, y equals to x squared plus 2x plus 3, and now they want you to find the new equation. 
So the transformation equation, which is exactly what you did with me for the very first lesson. For the very first lesson I gave you y equals to root of x and I said, all right, now go tell me what the new transformation should be if I want dilation factor 3, dilation factor 2. Okay, what you would have done is this. This is the technique I taught you. I said, if it's x, y transforms to 3x, 2y, I say, that's my new coordinate. So we label that, we say, oh, that is my new coordinate is equal to 3 times the original, or 3 times the old x. So 3 times old x. This would be new y value is equal to 2 times the old. But this is your equation, in terms of the equation, this is your old y values, old x values. So if you want your new one, rearrange these. So if you rearrange that, that now gives you, let's work that out, that becomes what? x equals to x dash on 3, and this is y equals to y dash on 2. Plug them both in. Okay, so you plug them both in, and it tells you now y is now y dash on 2. This is now 1 third x dash squared. This is plus 2 times 1 third x dash plus 3. If you expand it, that becomes now 1 on 9 x, x dash squared plus 2 on 3 x dash plus 3. And this is still y dash on 2. So if you rearrange the whole equation times 2 to every term, and your y value, your transformation equation should be 2 on 9 x squared plus 4 on 3 x plus 3. Because I just times everything by 2. So what I'm doing there, I'm just saying times 2, times 2, times 2, times 2, which should be 6. <laughs> there you go. So this is my transformation equation. Oh, it's lagging. That's meant to be a 6 there. <laughs>